Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to the World Below. Who truly likes spiders? Really, I mean, you will always get some person saying, oh well, spiders are really a benefit more than a curse because they get rid of all those pesky flies and other small biting insects. Spiders, we, we want more of them in our settlement. Yes, you will always get these people, especially <laughs> among the scarab dialectic, but... These people have not had to deal with the Arachnida on a day-to-day -day basis, I guarantee it. The Arachnida are the dominant form of Arachnid life in the world below. And note that term, dominant. It would be so easy to write the Arachnida off as simple bugs with capacious appetites. And sure, some of the lower forms of Arachnida, the pests, the spiders that climb and bite and jump and scuttle away into the dark, are simple pests. There are lots of them, but pests, they can be handled. But as they get larger, and as they gain intellect, as they start manoeuvring as hives and nests, and instead of being solitary little ambush, predators, they will swarm you and consume you, well, that's when they become slightly less easy to deal with. You see, in every crevice of every nook, every cranny, every fissure, every rift found in the world below, I guarantee there will be some arachnida hiding. They love the dark, but what's more, they love dragging people into it. They will put their webs in places that would surprise you. <laughs> Once, I knew a moth who was uh, clawing his way down a tunnel. It seemed well lit. Sunflies all around, luminescent fungi. Felt no need for threat. Not from Arachnida, certainly. But then, pff, fist goes through the ground. A thin layer of fungi separating his hand from a nest of arachnida. His hand was in that hole for probably about ten seconds before he was able to extract it free, confident that he had no shards of stone or toxic mould embedded in his uh, forearm. His hand emerged coated in Arachnida, and they were already burrowing beneath his skin, in some cases having flayed it off entirely. Now imagine the same thing happening with a foot, or a leg, or both legs, as you fall down into a trap hip deep. Why, at that point, it's barely worth climbing out and trying to save yourself. And we are still only focused on the smallest of these, because the Arachnida they grow, or they grow to colossal size. The larger ones will often mark themselves up or find themselves marked with vivid hues, incredible colours marking their shells, as if to tell you, we are dangerous, do not step into our territory. Certainly it works on other bugs. So few others prey on the arachnida, again going back to that word dominant. They are predatory and they are apex in their environment. I have heard tales that some arachnida even grow in place of their own scuttling legs or in addition to humanoid limbs. Where do you think that mutation comes from? Do you think also that they may be growing humanoid minds? I have heard tell that the greatest of these spiderous creatures can communicate, they just choose not to, and more than just chitters and squeaks, they can speak. Some of them may even be telepathic. As if we didn't have enough to deal with, with their uh, shells that are dense enough to deflect even chaos rocks at times, with mandibles sharp enough to tear not just through flesh and bone, but iron and steel. Is there not enough horror in the world below that we don't, can't even trust. We can't even trust the arachnids. No, you know what? I Bring on the flies. I would rather have the flies and the pest bugs and the various little hazards that, that come with not having arachnida in my settlement because these particular spiders, with their webs, with their teeth, 
with their many, many eyes and their many, many children and their horrible territoriality, you know, you can keep them. You can keep the Arachnida. I want nothing to do with them.